do want to take into account other things that are a lot more empirically uh, verifiable and visible, like current sanitation, current burglary, and current uh, garbage cart requests, which are connected. And so this, this data gets applied to the, the model object. The output is basically a list of current businesses with a little bit of identifying information and uh, a prediction score. And that gets dumped into a Shiny application. So how many people here? So interestingly enough, so this was where our final result looks like. It's actually just a list of restaurants, just a little bit of information about what they are, and a score. Um, there's no fancy map. It's just, it's, this, is, this is what ended up being the useful outcome for CDPH to actually use this on a day-to-day -day basis. So inspectors are assigned specific zip codes that they work in. And they can take uh, this list, once, once it's uh, handed out by the director of food inspections, and they can basically use it to prioritize. And we're not saying, go here, go there. We're relying on their on-the-ground knowledge, because they're the experts. They're the ones that have gone there year in and year out. They know the business. We're relying on them. This is just like giving them like a traffic report. You know, if you've driven to Oak Park a dozen times in rush hour, you have a feeling about whether you should take 290 or Lake Street. Okay, we're, we're just telling them 290 is red right now. Maybe you don't want to take it. I'll finish on this little bit here. Uh, document a couple of things that were really important about this project was the open source nature on the, rep, the reproducibility of that. And then also the design of the, uh, the, the, the code, the documentation to enhance that communication. So we have a little GitHub page here that describes in short what the, uh, what the results are. Uh, it's a seven-day increase, where the important violations and the aspects of the project where it mattered, and then describing the, uh, uh, the, the experiment in a bit more detail. But that's only one aspect of it. What was also important is being able to communicate to a technical audience as well. And so we have a, a, a white paper that is also in that repository that goes through the very find te technical details of the, akin to what you'd see in an academic journal article. Basically a lot of what the things that Gene has just said. That in itself is also reproducible. We use a library called Knitter, uh, and it's, there's a number of different things that are very similar to this. But in essence, when you see a line that says there's a, a uh, uh, they found 68%, we found 69% in the first half, what does that mean? How did we actually calculate that? Well. When you can take a look, you can take a look at the PDF, which certainly summarizes that, but then there's a knitter document inside there that has in plain text everything that we simply said, but then little bits of code that reach out to the data, to the R scripts that sit in the repository that show how those numbers, how those summaries were also generated as well. So it's full end-to-end -end reproducible. And so when you combine all of that, that we used open data, that we relied on community engagement uh, with with all state and a number of partners that existed outside the city of Chicago, and you combine that with the open source and uh, replicable model, it's an experiment around open science. Can government, by using data that's in the open, by using resources that are in the open, by collaborating with others, can we engage with an open science in that full end-to-end -end reproducibility? <coughs> I'm not sure, and I'm not sure how far it'll go. It's, it's tough, and it's a lot of work to get done correctly. But it's that next stage of combining research with open data and trying something a little bit different that pushes the envelope a little bit more. So we, we hope it's successful. We hope we can collaborate with others. We've had a few pull requests already on the repository. And so we're interested in a dialogue around this approach and around optimization, uh, but it's certainly a dialogue that now can kind of happen in the open. So the big thing is that you can help, and you can download the code, and you can get involved. So the framework that we were using is this is a machine learning concept called test train. And so you basically develop your model on the training data and you validate it, see whether or not it's right on the test data. For us, the training data was prior to 2014 mostly. And then we tested it on September and October of 2014. The actual data, the actual counts looks like this. So this is weekly inspections. Uh, going back in time for the history that we kept. And then the little green dots are where we were actually doing a validation of the model. And when we're, when we're running the model, this is how we look at 
this is the first way, actually, that we look at the performance. We say, the red line is our business as usual during those two months. This is how many inspections we found per inspection that we went out and conducted. And bear in mind, we have to inspect everything anyway. So if we give them a, a score that's a little bit too high, that's fine, because they had to go there anyway. We, false positives for us are not a problem. But what we like to see is this blue line to be higher than the red line. And it's that vertical distance at every single point that matters. And you can see that we, right out of the gate, we, we were, our model was doing better, and it, it stayed better until we, at the top, we actually run out of, we run out of places to find critical violations. 